Welcome to our worship service here at Beautiful Savior in SeaTac, Washington. As we join together to lift up our voices in prayer and praise to God and receive his blessings upon our life. Today, as we continue on with our series, looking at the Ten Commandments, we are on the Fifth Commandment, where we hear that command not to murder, not just in our actions, but our words and our deeds and how we treat our neighbor. As we gather this day, we do so in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O oh, come, let us worship him. Today, we remember the fifth commandment. You shall not murder. Lord, help us to be reconciled with each other and to overcome evil with good. We pray. O oh God, we are ashamed to lift up our faces this morning, for you require of us to be blameless, to not murder with our thoughts, our words, our deeds, and our actions, to not be angry with those that you cared about, that you love, because you have created all things, because you are the God who has made all things and have shown your love by sending your Son into the hands of sinful men. We come before you, Lord, knowing that you are the God that is ready to forgive, that is ready to save, that is ready to justify through the gifts of that redemptive act of Jesus. Be with us through his precious blood that was poured out for us. Be with us as we start our worship. Be with us as we come before you. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We lift up our voices, praising God because he is with us as we look and lift up our first song.
Jeremiah chapter 15, starting at verse 15. Lord, you understand. Remember me and care for me. Avenge me on my persecutors. You are long-suffering. Do not take me away. Think of how I suffer reproach for your sake. When your words came, I ate them. They were my joy and my heart's delight, for I bear your name, Lord God Almighty. I never sat in the company of revelers, never made merry with them. I sat alone because your hand was on me and you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unending and my wound grievous and incurable? You are to me like a deceptive brook, like a spring that fails. Therefore, this is what the Lord says. If you repent, I will restore you that you may serve me. If you utter worthy, if you utter worthy, not worthless words, you will be my spokesman. Let this people turn to you, but you must not turn to them. I will make you a wall to this people, a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but will not overcome you. For I am with you to rescue and save you, declares the Lord. I will save you from the hands of the wicked and deliver you from the grasp of the cruel. Romans chapter 12, starting at verse 9. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud. Be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. If you do this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. God calls us to overcome evil with good. However, instead, we respond to God's love with the hatred, anger, and wrongdoings of our life. Yet, with God, there is forgiveness. And so we turn to him, confessing our sins and seeking that forgiveness earned by Jesus Christ. Let us turn and confess our sins to God and to one another. With you there is forgiveness, O Lord. Therefore, you are feared. O Lord, hear my prayer. Listen to my cry for mercy. Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have failed to keep your commands and have done evil in your sight. We ask for your mercy and your help. In our selfishness, we betray you. Lord, forgive us. Christ, have mercy. We fail to live our lives according to your unchanging words and law. Instead, we follow the desire of our own hearts. Lord, forgive us. Christ, have mercy. Almighty God, have, have mercy, mercy upon, upon us. us. Forgive, Forgive us, us our sins, sins and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Sisters and brothers, hear this wonderful news that is not based off of your actions, but instead based off of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death 
of the Lamb of God who paid the price for you. And upon his suffering and death, I announce to you the forgiveness of all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It is because of what he has done that we are made holy. It is because of him that we now can read this psalm responsively knowing that it is for you. Let us turn and read Psalm 26 together. Vindicate me, Lord, for I have led a blameless life. I have trusted in the Lord and have not faltered. Test me, Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind. For I have always been mindful of your unfailing love and have lived in resilience on your faithfulness. I do not sit with the deceitful, nor do I associate with the hypocrites. I arbor the assembly of evildoers and refuse to sit with the wicked. I wash my hands in innocence and go about your altar, Lord, proclaiming aloud your praise and telling of all your wonderful deeds. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us share this wonderful news of the peace that we have, that new life that is vindicated, that is washed clean, that peace that we share amongst each other with those around you and those that are in the comment section as our choir lifts up their voices from their homes. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. 
Father God, giver of all life, you spoke life into the world. You have given life to us by sending your word made flesh. You breathe life into us when we are baptized with your mighty Holy Spirit. We confess that we do not live that life that you give to us. Instead, we live lives that are filled with anger, anger that pours out of us when we go about our lives to our neighbor, to those around us, to those that you love. We breathe out hate and discord from our lips, our mouths, our hands, our keyboards, our being. Grant us the weight of your love. Bring life into how we interact with your word, our relationship, the world around us, and our hearts. Empower us, O Lord, to be grateful for the life that you have given, the lives that we have seen all around us, so that we can praise you evermore. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We turn now to our gospel reading, hearing about that love that we are called to share, and how instead we turn to anger with our reading from Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, starting at verse 21. You have heard that it is said to the people long ago, you shall not murder, and anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. But I tell you that anyone who is angry with a brother or sister will be subject to judgment. Again, anyone who says to a brother or sister, Raka, is answerable to the court. And anyone who says, you fool, will be in danger of the fire of hell. Therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar and there remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled to them. Then come and offer your gift. Settle matters quickly with your adversary who is taking you to court. Do it while you are still together on the way, or your adversary may hand you over to the judge, and the judge may hand you over to the officer, and you may be thrown into prison. Truly, I tell you, you will not get out until you have paid the last penny. Well, good morning. It's time for our children's message. Today, for our children's message, we hear Jesus' words. Today, we're talking about murder. But Jesus doesn't just say murder is when, well, sadly, someone dies. Instead, murder is when we get angry. And I'm sure there's a lot of things you can get angry about. I'm sure either you or your friends have been angry before, whether that's on the playground, whether that's in the classroom. You might have been angry with, ooh, your brother, your sister, your mom, your dad. We can get angry quite often. And what we see is when we get angry, we hurt many, many people. We don't just hurt the person we're angry at. We don't just hurt ourselves. We also hurt how, well, God feels. You see, Keisha made this wonderful drawing right here. She made this drawing to show just how much God loves, and he made everything around us. Jesus made everything with just his word. He loves everything around us. We're called to show that same love. However, we often get really mad, and when we get mad, well, we're destroying. We're destroying what God made. That's part of what Jesus is warning us about, that we're not called to destroy, but instead to show how much he loves because a lot of people get hurt. So let's pray to God right now, asking for him to help us not to get mad at people. Dear Jesus, you tell us that our anger causes a lot of damage. We'd ask for your forgiveness and help. Help us love others as you loved us. Help us love so that we can love what you made. Love the people that you have placed in our lives. This we pray in your name. Amen. We continue by lifting up our voices, singing our next song for the day. Never before, oh my. 
grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In his name, amen. Today, as we continue on with our series looking at the Ten Commandments, we have reached the commandment that says, you shall not murder. One that can seem extremely straightforward and simple. Do not kill. Thus saith the Lord, thou shall not murder. To which all God's people said, amen. How silly we've all been. Just don't kill people. Well, there goes that. Well, it wish it was that simple. I truly wish it was that simple that I could just come up here and say, stop killing people. And we all stopped. That, however, isn't the case. Because if we're honest with ourselves, if we're truly honest, we are a people that love violence. We eat up violence. Violence is one of the main things, especially here in America, that we just adore. Violence is something that we see is marketable. When it comes to violence, it either makes the news media, it makes the multimedia, it goes and we start spreading it, whether you love it or you hate it, it sticks in your mind. It sticks in your mind and you remember it. You remember the wars that whether you fought in wars or not, you saw them on TV, you remember the films that talk about wars, you remember the movies, video games, you remember the articles, but then there's more than just war. We also think about the times that we get riled up because we're people that love the idea of getting riled up with war itself. Two families that are having at it. We love a good feud. We love watching those shows where you have a courtroom trial and Oh, we don't want just any courtroom trial. We want one where they're going at it and bashing heads, calling each other names. We love when we see destruction, when we see that destruction of families, livelihoods. We love watching when industries that we deem are bad just completely collapse. And we say they got their just desserts. We love when we get a courtroom trial and we see someone that is a criminal getting their due time. And we can go all the way back to just how easy and simple we think this is by saying from the very first murder case we have in the Bible of Cain and Abel, just how clear-cut it can seem. God says, you shall not murder. Cain killed his brother. Case closed. We see that he did this because he was jealous of his brother. We go, ah, he had motive. We hear about how he killed his brother. We know how he did it. He admits to doing it. It's pretty case closed, shut and dry. We know exactly what is going on. But what we don't like to think about is what God says about murder. What we don't like to think about is when God viewed this as murder. What we don't like to really reflect upon is a lot of the deeper internal things that are going on here. Because when that all comes up, we start to realize there is something deeper deeper inside of you, deeper inside of me, deeper inside of all of us that we don't want to admit. A deeper hatred that is eating us away. One of the ways that this commandment of you shall not murder has been addressed is when we look at our small catechisms as we remember those lessons, Martin Luther put it this way, that you should fear and love God so that you do not hurt or harm our neighbor in his body and in his possessions but that we help and support him in every physical need. This commandment commandment points to that call to support as much as it does not to harm, to aid as much as it calls us not to hurt. And we start to realize that God is talking much more about life than he is just about death. He's talking much more about how we treat people than he is about the idea of the lacking of life. And when we start going back and looking at how God views life as precious, how God views life as something that he says is valuable, we start to realize how cheap we often view it, how invaluable, how tossable we end up making lives around us. We look and start weighing some lives better than others. We start making some things more important than other things when it comes to people's lives. And when we get to Jesus' words we end up just brushing those away. We hear them. We say, yeah, we agree. But then we say, but that's not real. 
And I say not real in the sense that you don't really take them at face value. We don't really hear these words and stick to them the way we do with the command not to murder. And I say that because I don't look out and see a bunch of people, and I don't talk to a bunch of people that actively committed murder in the way we define it. But when it comes to how God defines it, ooh, we don't, we don't like that one as much. Because when it comes to how God defines it, we hear this. Jesus said, you have heard it said to a people long ago, do not murder. And anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. This we agree upon. This we say, yes, you're right, Lord. Justice for those that commit murder. And we watch anxiously on the TV, waiting for that justice to be delivered. We look at all the riots that are going on. We look at the idea of everything we're hearing on the news and say, when will justice prevail? But Jesus isn't done. But I tell you, anyone who is angry with his brother will be subject to judgment. Again, anyone who says to his brother, Raka, is is answerable to the Sanhedrin. But anyone who says, you fool, will be in danger of the fire of hell. Ouch. If you honestly pause if you honestly reflect, if you honestly think through what Jesus is saying here, ah, we murder more than we want to admit. There is murder that is going on all over the place, not just when we look and see a TV movie or TV special and we say, oh, look at all that carnage, but how much hatred, how much anger, how much injustice is going on when we get angry at our brothers and our sisters, when we get angry at our neighbor, when we get angry at our family, when we get angry at people driving on the five, when we get angry at people that we don't even know, when we start pointing fingers and applying blame, when we start getting mad at people online and typing things that we don't even think about how they affect other lives. God views that as murder. God's view is that whenever we are angry, whenever we are filled with hate, whenever our response is that of malice, that is murder. To backtrack a little bit, when we go back to the story of Cain and Abel, we hear that Cain had already committed murder. He had already murdered his brother well before the act was done. Murder was done in his heart when he was jealous and angry at his brother. That is when God views murder as being done. And God says that it is damnable to hell. We start to see just how much murder we really do. We start to realize how much we are committing murders that we don't even like to hear. First John continues on with this theme, saying that everyone who hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. We often like to get on our high horse. We often like to point out which side of an argument is wrong. We often like to look at the news and say, I can't believe those people. I can't believe what they're doing. I can't believe all the violence, the hatred, the anger that's going on around us without realizing that we're doing it ourselves. And if we're not doing that, we end up doing the opposite. Going back to what Luther said on this commandment, going back to what we hear throughout this, the idea of caring for our neighbor's body and well-being and just ignoring it all, just ignoring the well-being of those around us. We are more ready to go and commit murder by walking on the other side of the street than to actually help someone out. God views those times and places as murder as well. And this is the sad news, that up until this point, we can look and just want justice. Justice for those that have committed murder. But when it comes to God's law, when it comes to how God views murder, we back away. We make it a light deal. We say, no, 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 no. We, got, we have Jesus. We have Jesus on our side. It's okay. It's not really murder. And my sins will be forgiven. I don't need to worry about these things anymore. 
Instead, we're called to be upset, have righteous anger, to turn to God and say, Lord, how long are you going to let these murders continue? And we don't. We just let them hoard up. We hope that no one sees it. We hope that no one sees the ugly face of the anger that we hold up. But that's not what God wants from us. Because in the midst of the death and decay, the murders that we are committing all over the place, the disgrace that we turned God's life into, we see that Jesus came onto this field, that Jesus came into the midst of all of the damage that we've done to his life, and he became murder for you. He became the source of healing life to people that are committing murder with every breath they have. He became the one that took upon himself that judgment, that judgment and weight of the anger of all of the hatred that we spew out with all of our words, with all of our actions, with all of the things that we type online. Jesus became a murderer to divert that punishment that is due for each and every murder we commit. This is how seriously God takes murder. This is how serious that God, uh, seriously God takes life, that he was willing to die for you, that he was willing to die for the lives that we continue on breaking, the families that we see torn apart out of anger and hate. You see, God views life as precious, so precious, in fact, that he was willing to die for them. We are called then to show that life is precious and how we act with those around us, how we interact with those in our lives, how we act to those that are struggling with their life now because God values life and he calls us to do the same with how we interact with others. When we trust in Jesus, we know that there is a certainty in that forgiveness that we have in our sins, but we are called to call upon him for that grace to continue to show how much that he values life so that we don't continue on murdering and destroying, but instead uplifting, connecting people, and showing them that for those that are condemned under this weighty burden, there is forgiveness. That is how much God values your life that he was willing to die for. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us at this time confess what God was willing to do. Confess that faith that we share. Confess that knowledge of who God is and what he has done for us. With the words of the Apostles' Creed, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. A couple of announcements for you. As we continue on, now that we are in the month of, I just blanked out on the month, September, we have a few things that are moving uh, times, and we're going to be seeing a few shifts now that we have school starting back up. One of them is that our Wednesday Bible study is now going to be at 6 p.m. This is to kind of help out as we have a few teachers that are going to be in the congregation as well as people that are now back at school, back at work, to help out so we can all join together at our 6 p.m. Bible study. The uh, small groups that have been meeting are continuing to go on, and if you would like to start up a small group, we invite you to contact us so we can help connect you with some resources, whether that is a Bible small group, whether that is a fellowship small group, a support small group, or a game small group. There are many ways we can connect and stay connected at this time. We give thanks, as always, to Link SeaTech for helping us out with Zoom during this time as we continue to stay connected with this. Our Tuesday coffee hour will be staying at 10 o'clock, you can always join. That is going to be on Tuesdays. So if you would like to join together and see each other, share that love that we have, and 
see some friendly faces and hear some voices, we'll be sending those out through our uh, MailChimp. If you haven't been receiving our MailChimp updates, please let us know so we can add you onto our email list. We also want to make sure that you uh, know and have heard that we have our portals of prayer in. If you would like to receive one of the portals of prayer, please let us know so we can make sure you receive one of those. The last announcement, uh, last announcement that I have is we are continuing on with our pledge drive going on for our new roof. The original roof over our fellowship hall is slowly decaying away, and we have a few bids going in, and we're working on having some pledge drives at this time of how much you're willing to help support that. A reminder on that, that these pledges are over and above what you're already donating to the church, as we still have our normal funds and ways that we are working towards our normal expenses, and doesn't make too much sense to build a roof if we then can't support the ministry going on here. So please contact Keisha if you have any questions about the roof fund. As always, you can help support us and with many of the different expenses that we have going on here, many of the different ways that we're reaching out to people through your gathering of tithes and offerings. As we gather these tithes and offerings, we remember that God doesn't need our funds, but the church does. We have a number of different expenses, especially now that we're back in a session with school, different fees that come up, different things that continue going throughout the year. And so we, we'd ask that if you're able to help us out, this is a wonderful way that you continue to bless us. You can support us with the Give Plus app, with a link that's on our website, or through the mail. Any questions on that, the office is more than willing to help out at this time. Let us lift up our voices to God, giving him thanks for all of his many blessings as he calls us to share those blessings with his church. Let us lift up an offering prayer. Father God, you continue to support your people. You call us to share those blessings that you have with us by giving back a portion of the blessings you give to us, to give a portion of what you have bestowed upon your children. We'd ask, Lord, that you would give us in the same measure that we give, that you would remind us that we can never outgive your love. This is the one place that you test us. You say, test me in how much I, you can test me in how much I've given to you. Help us to remember that all gifts come from you. You are the source of all life. May peace be in our hearts as we continue to give. May grace flow from our words. May we use your gifts wisely. In Jesus' name, amen. At this time, we lift up our prayers to God with the prayers of the church. If you have prayer requests, as always, we invite you to share those with us here so we can lift them up in our many services. Let's lift up our voices to God. Lord God, knowing that you are there, knowing that you value life so much that you sent your Son to be our salvation, to be the one to take on our punishment, to be the one that gives us life. Hear our prayers on behalf of your church, your people, and for the needs of the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Lord, for our faith. We pray, Lord, for those throughout the world that are going through persecution on behalf of Christ. We pray that you would strengthen them in times of trial. Preserve them in your grace in days of doubt. Let them know of your love, the love that has already gone through trial for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our church here. We pray that we would continue being formed by you. We pray that we would continue on lifting up our voices, giving you thanks for your mighty works, for your love that you've poured down, giving us life. We pray, Lord, for the congregation members here, for those that we continue to try and reach, that you would continue to add people to this congregation as we reach out to those, whether it be online or in person. We'd ask your blessing on those that continue to help out, both with our church and with our school. We'd ask that you would raise up people with a heart and passion for those around them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift up prayers for our president of this nation, for our congressmen, for our senators, for our legislators, for civil servants, for our governor, and for those that continue to serve in government, for those that continue to be first responders, for those that continue 
to show that idea that you are a God of justice. We'd ask, Lord, that you would be with them and give them wisdom and that we would be a nation of peace where your word can flourish. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Lord, for those that continue to fight for peace, fight for life, fight for what is right in the midst of a world that loves violence. We pray, Lord, for all of those that are mourning the deaths that we continue to hear in the news. We pray, Lord, for those that are outraged at the wrongdoings that we hear around us. We'd ask, Lord, that you would be with all those people that are going through difficult times and ask that you would continue to give them a sense of peace. Protect all of those that are in times of danger at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Lord, for those that are going through times of sickness, those that are in times where they need your grace upon them. We lift up to you those on our hearts and our minds, those on our prayer list. We pray for Bob, Dorothy's brother, for Floyd, and for Spencer's father. We also lift up besides these, those that are on our hearts and our minds at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, as we continue on through this pandemic, we remember those that you have placed in our lives, those lives that have gone on before us, those lives through faith who are now in your grace, those lives that have shown a sample of faith through us. We give you thanks, Lord, for all of those that are now in fellowship with you. We pray, Lord, that their lives would continue to shape ours. We pray for our eternal life in your kingdom. We lift up those that continue to mourn the loss of a loved one. Strengthen them at this time. Let them know that death isn't the answer, but you have given an answer with life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we join together in that prayer that your son taught us, that prayer that is that life of the church, with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Father who, who art, art in heaven, heaven Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us lift up our voices with our closing song for the day. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation. Purchase of God, born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior. Submission, perfect delight Visions of rapture now burst on my sight Angels descending bring from above Echoes of mercy, whispers of love This is my story, this is my song Praising my Saviour song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I am my 
Savior, I'm happy and blessed. Watching, waiting, looking above, filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. We join together in our closing prayer. Lord God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you call us to be a people of your life, a people that reflect what you have done for us and all we say and do. We'd ask that you would help us with our anger, our hatred, with that malice that we hold towards one another. Remove that from us as we go this day. Let us show your love in all that we say and do. Let us show that you are a God that loves and cares for life rather than death. For you are a God of the living, not of the dead. This we pray in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Receive now the blessing of our Lord and Savior. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you in his favor and give to you his peace. Amen. Go in God's peace as you serve the Lord.